Welcome back to Kentucky Route Zero. We just finished the entertainment interlude between Act 2 and 3, so let's do the summary for Act 3. Now having retrieved the old records Lula wanted them to get, we try to find a way back into the Zero to bring them to Lula. The original entrance to the Zero had vanished, so we need to search. While driving around, we encounter Johnny and Junebug, who are on their way to perform at a bar. After the performance, the bartender gives us directions to the Zero. We find ourselves in the Hall of the Mountain King. We play a text adventure on an old computer called Xanadu. Then we head into the Zero and end up in a church, where a platform lowers us down into the Hard Times Whiskey Distillery. In this place, everyone has the glowing skeletal look, just like Conway's leg. We're told most people work there to pay off debt. At some point, Conway drinks some random drink given to them and is told it's expensive and Conway will have to work to pay off their debt starting tomorrow. Still having a package to deliver, we leave on a ferry and end up back at the Bureau of Reclaimed Spaces. End of Act 3. So let's do the interlude. Here and there along the Echo. Remember the Echo River taking the mucky mammoth along it. There's actual phone line physics. Put it up to your ear. Your right or your left ear. That's so cool. I don't think anyone's going to answer. Operator services are currently suspended pending automation. The Echo River Central Exchange is being phased out and replaced with the new consolidated auxiliary switch number 30. Auxiliary switch number 30? Does that mean if I dial 30? It'll give me something? I know there's a phone number here, but now that I've just discovered the operator thing... Okay. That's not a thing. Two seven zero three zero one five seven nine seven. service provided by the Bureau of Secret Tourism. For a menu of our resources, press 1. If you have an extension to dial, press 9. For more information about our organization, press 3. If you don't remember dialing this number at all, press 5. To hear these options again, Press zero. If I don't remember dialing, press five. So, you don't remember dialing this number. You just sort of woke up with the phone pressed to your ear ringing on the other end. Or maybe you thought you dialed a different number, but your digits betrayed you. Or there's a faulty connection somewhere out there in that spiderweb lattice of phone cords that covers all of creation. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's it, huh?
<laughs> oh, what's this? Bob. Cool. Ready to go? Oh, so once again, we're playing as Emily, I think. Uh, let's just take a minute. Yeah, not done yet. Sources, press 1. If you have an extension to dial, press 9. For more information about our organization, press 3. The Bureau of Secret Tourism is supported by a generous population of river creatures whom I fix up and grill as necessary. I am environmentally minded and I believe all creatures are equally deserving of support in their transition to the next world. So I usually try to sing a little elegy, like... If you're holding a snake right now, press 4. So, you're probably not in any danger, but why are you holding that snake? For historical sites along the Echo River... Press 1. Well, if you're dialed into this here informational resource, then you're a certain kind of beachcombing, bat-calling sightseer. So let's take a driftwood inventory. For a guide to the river's flora and fauna, press 2. For different types of water, press 1. The Echo River is best known for its plentiful waters. Not their volume, but their diversity. There's surface water, deep water, big water, and small water. Water that moves quickly. Slower water. Water in a cup. There's the water you know about, the water you don't know about, and the water you only assume exists due to indirect evidence like a rumbling sound behind the rock. Cool water, but also warm, and even warmer. Water that gets things clean. Water that only makes things dirtier. Water's both soft and hard. Water in living bodies. For the language of bats, press 2. Many find learning the language of bats to be intimidating. But it's really pretty straightforward. The most difficult part is getting your ultrasonic pronunciation right. See, bats have enormous, complex ears. For us, it's more of a struggle. For insect interactions, press 3 to return to the main... If you stop your boat somewhere cool, you may find yourself swarmed by insects. You may swat at them or cover your face, thinking they're all trying to bite you or buzz in your ear. For help identifying an unfamiliar sound, press 3. If you're holding a snake right... For a catalog of subterranean bird song, press 1. Main now I play you several recordings of Echo River bird song. When you hear a song you want to know more about, just press 1. At any time, you can press 5 to stop. For help identifying something that's happening in the dark, 
press 2. If you are... The wet, rocky contours of the Echo River make for sometimes baffling reverberations that turn mundane sounds into weird, rattling symphonies. Like that. It can be a challenge to pick through the clamor and recognize even something as simple as water dropping in a metal bucket, especially in the dark. If you are hearing organ music, press 3. To return to the main... Lucky you. Does it sound like this? If you have an extension to dial, press 9. Again... Now is the time to dial an extension. Now is the time to dial an extension. Only problem is I don't know any extensions. I'm sure there is an actual extension I could dial, but I'm not sure what it would be. So, let's go. Let's read the summary for Act 4. We apparently must have been given the directions for 5 Dogwood Drive because we start this act on the Mucky Mammoth Ferry heading there. Now, this act has a lot of forking storylines, choices where you can decide to explore some place the boat is stopped at or stay on board. Conway's arm has turned skeletal and glowy, and they seem to be in a downward spiral. We spend some time at the Rum Colony as Shannon, we also visit the Radvansky Center as Shannon. We also visited a grove. Eventually, we make it to the Echo River Central Exchange. While there, and playing as Shannon, we see Conway, now a complete glowing skeleton, being taken away by two other glowing skeletons on a boat, off to work for their debt. Everyone else continues without Conway, apparently still determined to deliver Conway's package to Five Dogwood Drive. The act ends as we stare at a spiral staircase, the next path to our destination. One final interlude, un pueblo de nada. Maya, I'm not late, am I? Uh, this must be our guest. Oh, hi, you must be, um... Oh, sorry, I'm Maya. Right, the traveling artist. Welcome. I'm Emily. I, uh, work here. Great. Rita says you're the producer. Oh, <laughs> did she? <laughs> I guess so. I do a little bit of everything. Yeah, I know the feeling. You weren't around earlier, at the lunch thing? No, I don't live in town. I just come in to work on the station. Really? It's quite a hike, isn't it? I know some shortcuts. Oh, okay. I uh, should make sure she's comfortable. So, do you... No, no, I'm fine, thanks. I'll just find somewhere to perch until you folks are ready. I've got a lot to digest. Uh, mentally, I mean. Well, and it was a big lunch. Uh, but I spent most of the afternoon examining the mounds. Oh, the burial mounds? Yeah, that's why I came down here. To see them up close and make some sketches. They're amazing, right? That make me uncomfortable, to be honest. Seems kind of weird to build a town in a graveyard. Sure, every town is a graveyard, but usually the town comes first. 
Okay, I'll check if Rita's ready. You can just hang out back here somewhere. We'll let you know when it's time to come on set. Great. Thanks for having me. You too. I mean, uh, you know what I mean. Ugh, why am I so awkward with visitors here? Just used to seeing the same 12 people day in and day out, I guess. Ooh. We're just looking at these illustrations. They're really cool. Uh, looks like the ceiling is holding up okay. Just the usual leaks. <laughs> just the usual leaks. Looks like I just made it before the sky broke open. At least the floor is staying dry. My left boot has a hole. Ben and Bob, working on a project. God, this is such a cool way to look around the room like this. I love it. I hope the neighbors are okay. Should I click these things? Is something going to happen when I do that? Oh, I guess... I guess it kind of just makes it go away. Or goes to the next thought if there's more about that thing. If it gets any worse, we might be stuck in town tonight. We found that radio in the woods a week or two ago. I cleaned the circuits with rubbing alcohol and left it in the sun. Seems like it was working okay again. So why are they taking it apart? Miss you, cross eye. Ah, box fans. Box fans feel distinctly American to me. I don't know if that's true. I don't know if box fans are common in other countries as well, but... I don't know, I just associate them with America. Oh, James left a patch wired up on the image processor. Nice. Maybe it'll be time to play with it after the show. Slow Mo Crow. Keeping an eye on the control board. A crow? Keep up the good work, Mo. That's a cool bird. The video data bank. It used to be on the other side of the room, and the couch was in this corner. We moved it here where the ceiling's least leaky. It's further from the windows, too, so sunlight doesn't bleach the labels. So much of archiving is just playing hide and seek with the weather. Oh, right. Serrano's here to help with the weather report. That should be cool. Elmo gets a lot more into it when he has some noise to vibe on. Time to start the show. Okay, ready when you are. How does it look outside? Gross. Yeah, well, I'm not surprised. Saturn's in retrograde. What does that even mean? Yep. Think it'll let up? I guess we'll see what Elmo says. My poor tomatoes. Okay, in three, two... Hi, it's Rita. This is your evening broadcast, 8192. It's really raining out there. Damn, I can hear it from here. We have a few leaks. Put some pots and bowls underneath them. Thanks, Ron, for lending us your extra pots and bowls. I hope you had a good day, despite the weather. Although it was really nice earlier, right? I had a good day today. I met a new friend. She's going to join us in about a minute or so. Maybe you saw her earlier, around lunch. Or if you didn't meet her, then you'll meet her in a minute. Or if you met her already, but you still want to hang out, I'm sure there's plenty that we can talk about. Wow, so this is 8192. Is that right, Emily? What is she talking about? Rita, to camera. That's a lot of broadcasts. 
I came in around the fives, so I've only been around for half of them. Eight one nine two eight thousand one hundred ninety two broadcasts. And back then in the fives, let's see, we had. I did night noise, and we had the swap show and the bird show, and people were just coming in and dropping off tapes all the time, and. And now, well, now it's just the evening broadcast. But it's not like. I'm not saying we're in decline or anything like that. I love the evening broadcast. I think it was the first show we had on here. It was the first show not produced by the power company. It was the first community show, yeah. Those hypnotic fuzzy old tapes about safe wiring. There were a few power company training videos that ran before, uh, but those don't count. Yeah, so it's the spine of the station. Or maybe it's the heart. Or is it the skin? What part of the WEVP body do you think this is? Why don't you come on by and tell us about it? We're going to be here for another 30 minutes or so. Or if you don't want to brave the storm, you can always give us a call. Same number as always. 270-216-5556. Okay, so we're going to start with the tape. This is an old one. It's one of mine, but maybe you haven't seen it. Or if you've seen it, it's been a while, so maybe you've forgotten. Ron whispering, shit. What? She asked me to cue up her tape when Pablo Donata. Where is it? I don't know. It's probably still shelved. I'll find it. Ron silently mouths a thank you. Let's go get it. Quick. This tape should be on a shelf back here. Emily scans the shelf of videotapes. I had these alphabetical. To herself absently. Can't keep anything here organized for long. We should put this all in chronological order, although I guess it's hard to remember sometimes, the order of things. And some of these tapes were made at the same time. Or we started one video and then started another in the middle and then came back later and... Time is at a joint. It's like sweeping a beach. Oh, wait a minute. Ron said he'd start filing the old stuff by language, so... Favorite tires, that's English. Disagreeable birds, also English. The zone, that's in Japanese. Fiesta Salvaje, I'm probably not pronouncing that correctly. Getting warmer. Un Pueblo de Nada. Aha! What would you all do without me? I'll cue up Rita's tape now. There you go, Mo. Hold off on playing this until Rita's done setting it up. Thanks, babe. What a cool bird. Anything else going on, or should I go back to the show? Back to the show. Some people that lived here a long time ago, before the company town, before the airstrip, like over a hundred years ago. Okay, so I hope you enjoy it. To Emily. Ready, Emily? I wonder what Maya thinks of the dock. This is cool. Have you seen it before? I should say something nice. Yeah, it's... something else. You don't sound convinced. It's not a bad way to learn about history, though. I helped Rita edit this. Took us all of a week, coming in here after the day's broadcasts were done, with the night loop running in the background. We'd play her narration on cassette and write down times, 
and scrub frame by frame through the video and try to cut it just so. Excruciating. It is history, right? Or is it just a story? It seems kind of sad now. I guess it's kind of a memorial. Those are always sad. A memorial to the people who used to live here. Or is there even a difference? Although, now the tape is just here on a shelf. Every once in a while we dust it off and it shuffles around the airwaves again like an old dog. Sorry, did I say something wrong? Oh, no. I'm sorry. I just have some weird shit going on in my head tonight. You know what I mean? Sure. It's okay. I'm sorry I spaced out. Don't worry about it. You should... Oh, should I go sit? Yeah, um, it's almost over. I hope the sign isn't getting wet, is what it said. Next up is Maya's interview. Rita to Maya. So where are you staying tonight? Here in town. Oh, good. Yeah. Even before the storm came in, I thought it'd be nice to get some rest before the long hike back to the highway. Ron offered his... loft? What? He said I could sleep in his loft. Oh, honey. He's talking about his barn. Ron, nobody wants to sleep in your barn. Ron shrugs. <laughs> Ron says, it's not haunted. How did that rumor start? Oh, was it when Bob stayed there? He heard scratching and crying. It really spooked him and it was all he'd talk about for a week. Probably just a cat. Um... You'll stay at my place. Oh, thanks. With that storm coming, I should probably find somewhere to stay out here tonight. Maybe I'll just sleep here in the studio. Do you need anything? Actually, do you have an extra toothbrush? It'd be nice to sleep under the stars. Um, I think I do, actually, yeah. Oh my god, I've been in the woods, you know. Right. I actually used a twig this morning. I kind of chewed up one end. No stars tonight, though. I've done that. Really? I'm disappointed. I thought I invented it. Even better, you can chew in some pine needles. Really freshens your breath. I mean, it's not perfect. Wow, that's roughing it. Just close your eyes and pretend, I guess. <laughs> right, exactly. And even then, it's just not the same as real toothpaste. Do they know we're rolling? Emily waves to Rita. Rita to camera. Oh, okay. Hi. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed that video. Like I said, that was from, like, it's several years old, I can't remember exactly. I enjoyed it very much. Oh, thank you, Maya. Emily whispering to Ron. What's next? I brought in a tape. Oh. Okay. You good? All queued up. I'm gonna check on the boys. What the hell are they doing? Ben and Bob are seated on the couch poking at the electronic innards of a radio. So then it won't mute while it scans between stations. Okay. Because that's where they live, right? Uh, no. You just want that constant static noise. Right. The noise, that's where they live. They don't live anywhere, dude. They're ghosts. Okay. Why does it matter where you tune the radio? It's like soil in your garden. You need rich soil, right? A mashed up, rotted leaves and stuff. Like compost. 
Bob to Emily. Oh, hey, Em. How's the show? Ben has something stuck in his beard. Oh, uh, you know, it's a piece of food. Actually, maybe it's a leaf? Pretty good progress on the ghost box. Maybe he did it on purpose, like a beard leaf garland. But it's only one little accent leaf. It scans constantly. I should tell him. And play it back later. To Ben. Hey, you've got something in your beard. Nah. The radio crackles as it scans rapidly across the spectrum. Stimpets of voices mix with colored noise and unfamiliar interference patterns. Did you hear that? That was definitely a voice from beyond the grave. It sounded like, um... I clearly heard dogwood in there. Yeah, kinda... Uh, sounded more like frogwood to me. What the hell is frogwood? Man, I don't tell the ghosts what to say. Did you hear that, Emily? Must have been dogwood. Dogwood, of course. I guess it doesn't matter. The ghost voices don't really come out until you play back the recording later. They only exist in recordings. Like a copy without an original. A mirror reflecting something that isn't in the room. Eerie. Like the mounds. The burial mounds here in town? You think they're haunted? No, or sure, probably. But I meant they're like the reflection. The people who made them lived hundreds of years ago. That whole society is long gone. Now we just have these lingering echoes, without any trace of context. Yeah, that is kind of eerie. So the ghosts speak and we can't hear it, but the tape recorder can hear it? Is that right? I don't know. Sometimes I think it's more like the recording itself is a ghost. Like, that's what ghosts are. Recordings of events that didn't happen. When something keeps leaving new marks even after it's gone. False memories. 